Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Why Everyone Plays. It's a series where I discuss champions in League of Legends that often see a lot of play in both the pro scene and solo queue. If you've seen my Why No One Plays videos, this series is basically the opposite. League constantly changes for better or worse, and while champions might get high pick rates here and there, the game does remain relatively consistent on which champions remain popular and which ones don't. So, for this episode, I want to cover a fan favorite, Lee Sin. You know, the one that misses all his cues if he's on your team, but on the enemy team, he has pinpoint accuracy. God, I hate this champ. Moving on, since the series is a lot more, I guess, well-known in the sense that a lot of people know why certain champions are popular, the point of why everyone plays is to discuss possible reasons as to why they might have a very high pick rate based on their gameplay design and thematic, not so much common stereotyping. So for example, I'm not going to say that Lux is popular because she's anime waifu material, although I feel like eventually I will have to touch on that, which I'm not looking forward to, but for the time being, we'll stick to champions that are popular because of gameplay related stuff and cross that bridge when we get there. If you enjoy these types of videos, a rating would be much appreciated, and also subscribe for more Why Everyone Plays videos. There's a playlist in the description below if you want to check out any other episodes. And if this is the first time you're on my channel, please take a look at some of my Why No One Plays videos as well, but that aside, let's just get started. Lee Sin, let's be real, he has arguably the most loyal fanbase of any champion. No matter how many times he gets nerfed, no matter how much the meta goes against him, he will always be one of the highest pick rate champions in the game. Like, not even in the jungle. I mean, he sometimes has a pick rate of 50%. The only other champion that comes close to that kind of pick rate domination is Ezreal, but there are only about 15 marksmen in the game versus 30 plus junglers, so it says a lot. Oftentimes, though, because of how diverse the jungle role is, there may be large shifts in the meta, which requires jungle means to adapt from patch to patch. One month, the top champions might be fighters, next month it might be tank meta, then we could have assassins run the show, then mages. Needless to say, you need to be a very versatile champion to be able to routinely have a pick rate above 10%, let alone 20-30%, to which is what Lee Sin averages. Despite what I said earlier though, junglers happen to have the highest amount of one tricks of any role in the game. You see a lot of Rengar 1 tricks, Kha'Zix, Lee Sin, Graves, what have you, and the reason why these champions are consistently picked is because of how different they operate in a variety of factors, some of which are only specific to that champion. After all, Graves, Ivern, Rek'Sai give you extremely unique experiences, and those experiences can resonate with players, so they go the extra mile to make their champion work, even if it's not the most efficient tactic available, or meta. Of all those champions, Lee Sin is the biggest one. He's of the Diver subclass, generally pretty popular among the player base because Divers have all the qualities of fighters but trade in some durability for speed. In other words, they're squishier than Juggernauts but faster. Although that trade-off is usually very favorable since not only are they faster in mobility but also their rotation. Since Divers have a Blitz and Burn playstyle, many of them are also quick to execute their combo. Not nearly as fast as Assassins of course, but I'm sure you've been one-shotted by a Vi, or Necton, or Diana here and there so I don't have to really explain that. As a whole though, they share the same characteristics of both sides, which means a Diver can double as an Assassin by going full damage or be, you know, a little meat wall by going tank. Not exactly the same, mind you, but it's passable enough and like I mentioned in some of my previous episodes, having that kind of freedom is really nice. So let's talk about Lee Sin now that the general info dump is over with. Three factors that I believe attribute to his massive popularity. Number one, and arguably the main reason why everyone likes him so much, Lee is a very fast tempo champion, like really fast. Despite being considered a diver, his mobility rivals or even surpasses that of assassins. As a result of this, he covers large distances in much shorter times, thus resulting in his tempo being usually higher than a lot of junglers. For junglers, tempo is everything. The faster you can do something, the faster you can get from one point of the map to the other, the better. That's often why popular jungles are usually divided into two categories, one that clear really damn fast, and the ones that move around really fast. It's sort of funny because his kit was built intentionally in that way. Thinking about a blind person being able to move around really fast, usually you would think they'd be really careful when moving about, but given that Lee Sin is one of the fastest junglers in the game in terms of mobility, it's an interesting twist. The benefit of having energy as a resource is that theoretically you never run out of it, and that's extremely beneficial for junglers since ideally, you want to recall as rarely as possible. Fortunately for him, he has one of the best if not the best energy regeneration passives built into his kit, maybe second to Shen, probably. Flurry gives him a 40% attack speed boost for his next two basic attacks and restores energy with each hit. So naturally, it's in your best interest to weave in a couple attacks here and there with each skill activation, and that's important because Lee is the only energy champion in the game with 6 main abilities instead of 3, meaning he might have a bit more difficulty with energy management if you're not using his abilities correctly. Sonic Wave throws a skill shot that does damage and if it marks a target, they're revealed until he uses Resonating Strike, which is a dash towards that target that deals some really high damage, especially if the target is low on health, 
For an ability that's really quick to read, it's extremely powerful. Both attacks combined have a potential of 465 base damage and 300% bonus AD scaling, which is massive for a basic ability that's quite spammable, not that high of a cooldown. It's a ranged attack, a dash, a stealth revealer, and an execute built into one single Q. In practice, this attack is easily avoidable, yes, but the fact that it has this much potential usage would probably explain why his W and E aren't exactly anything to write home about. Since his Q is his main damage tool, W and E focus mostly on utility. Safeguard has him dash to a target ally, and if it's champion, they both get shielded for quite a high base amount, higher than the base value of support champions. Obviously that is to compensate for the fact that it scales with AP, and Lee Sin doesn't build AP which makes sense, but he's the only champion in the game other than Shen and Rakan who has a mobility spell that can also shield, at least to my knowledge. Not to mention he can use this to dash to any unit that includes wards, minions, or even created entities like Thresh's Lantern, Teemo's Mushrooms, and Jarvan's Flag. It creates some very unique synergy. Iron Will gives him some lifesteal and spell vamp, which removes his need for Ravenous Hunter, and allows him to take Ingenious Hunter instead for more ward usage. Even though his second W doesn't really look like much, that much sustainability makes a huge impact both early and late game because it lets him stick around and not have to go back to the base to heal. Once again, keeps his tempo and momentum in the game as high as possible. As for his E, Tempest, it's an area nuke that deals magic damage and reveals targets around him. Having two abilities that reveal champions makes it so you can't try to juke him through Fog of War, even if you're out of his line of sight. And where are most of the brushes in this game? In the jungle. His cripple basically only casts a slow on targets recently hit by Tempest, not that big a deal, but hey, lets him stick onto targets longer or use it to slow down pursuers. This means a lot more than you might think since even a tiny slow can make it easier for him to land his Q. Finally, Dragon's Rage, the ultimate. A roundhouse kick, or if you're playing Godfist Lee Sin, it's a big punch that knocks targets really far back and deals high damage. Plus, any enemies hit by the target basically get bowling balled and take collateral damage. I don't need to explain this ability, you guys already know, this attack is raw. Any Lee Sin player worth something knows how to do an insect with this attack, it's one of the best designed ultimates in the game in my opinion. Nothing too crazy or fancy, no hoops to jump through, just a simple and clean knockback kick that does damage. In fact, that's all of his abilities, Lee Sin is living proof, you don't need to make a champion that does 900 million things for them to be interesting and fun. None of his skills has a big description unlike most other new champions. Built-in resource sustenance, built-in health sustenance and defense, high mobility both as a means of attack and retreat because remember, his safeguard can be used to close the gap or to widen it and he can use his Q to escape harm by tagging onto a nearby enemy or neutral unit. He's extremely self-reliant which is what players like in a champion given the cavalier every man for himself nature of solo Q. None of his abilities have any abnormal stipulations that aren't out of his control. He doesn't have to worry about his teammates, he doesn't have to worry about the enemy team, nor any extraneous circumstances. Everything about Lee Sin centers around himself, and that's just the way people want him. Since his abilities are so intuitive, that leads us to point number two. He's an easy champion to pick up, thus making him very accessible to prospective players. But since there's so much he can do with his abilities, that means you'll almost never reach a point where you've learned all you can, which is an amazing trait to have for a champion because players love the satisfaction of improving in a video game, more so in competitive games where the player that improves faster wins. I touched on the fact that his abilities have offensive and defensive purposes, which means they're not one-dimensional, contradicting their very cut and dry descriptions. Do you use your Q on a minion to close the distance, or save it for the enemy champion? Do you recast Q or should you hold off on it? Should you ward hop to put yourself in a better position, or use it on yourself to get a shield? Should you use your ultimate on an enemy squishy to execute them, or should you use it against a dangerous bruiser to knock them away from your team? While this may seem initially intimidating to players trying to understand his fundamentals, the abundance of choice is one of the virtues every game should have. It's fine to impose constraints on a champion, but allow the freedom for players to explore what's the best option to take for each cast of an ability. That's why he's so hard to master. It's not necessarily the mechanical inputs you gotta get the hang of, although those are important, make no mistake. It's the knowledge and experience you need playing as Lee Sin to know what to use your abilities for in what situation. And given that you cast your Q, W, and E hundreds of times per game, you need to have an incredible presence of mind to play this guy at a high level. Every reaction, every pro action, every advantage, every disadvantage, every split second decision, that kind of intensity is why players love this guy. His complicated nature doesn't stem from how weird and janky his abilities are like Aphelios, it comes from the player. Players crave agency, we're drawn to the sense of accomplishment we get from outplaying our opponent, as well as the frustration from messing up. Both positive and negative outcomes make you want to try him again and again. For my third point, this touches more on a psychological level, but that doesn't make it any less meaningful to the experience. Lee Sin is a very profound champion. Because of how mobile he is, and how explosive his abilities 
can be, whether they are or not, you always have to pay attention to him in a fight. Just like no matter how weak a Darius is, if you ignore him long enough, he can and will destroy you. Lee Sin's not a raid boss, definitely not, but unlike most divers who once they get into the fight, they don't plan to leave. Lee Sin has the option to go smack dab into a slugfest and also back out, dance around, and look for a re-entry. Not to mention the flexibility in his item builds, if he goes full damage, you have to pay attention to him flanking you from the back and one-shotting your AD carry. If he goes full tank, you have to watch his positioning to see if he's gonna insect, or how annoying his shield can be since he can use it very frequently. The sheer pressure he exerts in a fight because you don't know what he'll do at any point in time. That unpredictability he has is what makes him such an interesting champion to play and play against. Players catch on to that. Think about Rengar. I'm sure you've had a game here and there where the enemy team had a super fed Rengar, you had absolutely no idea where he's gonna pounce, and that psychological warfare adds on to his already scary pressure. Obviously, Lee Sin doesn't have nearly as much offensive presence as someone like Rengar or Kha'Zix, but he has way more versatility, which is a different kind of presence, though equally as powerful. He does a lot of stuff. Players want to do a lot of stuff. More importantly, they want to do a lot of cool stuff. The swag factor is what makes him really popular as well. I talked about it a little in my Darius video about how you need to have a sense of satisfaction when playing a champion, such as getting a 5-man pentadon. The reason why you see so many Lee Sin, Yasuo, and Riven one tricks is because as toxic as the general community might label them, you can make some really fancy montage clips, and it generally creates more intense gameplay than just, you know, playing Singe, who just runs around and gasses you. Not very engaging. In a sense, he's a jack of all trades. He can do a lot of things. Not as good as those specializing in those fields, but consistency is what makes him popular. And consistency is a paramount hallmark for a champion's pick rate. Players would much rather be able to do a lot of things decently well than to do one thing super well but suck at everything else. It gives you the freedom to adapt in the middle of every game, thus increasing your overall agency when playing the champion, thus incentivizing you to play them again and again. It's like a cycle. One aspect complements another, which then complements another, and that's the result of a good champion design. I'm gonna say it, Lee Sin is an excellently designed champion. Say what you want about how all Lee Sins on your team miss their cues and how all Lee Sins on the enemy team are 90% win rate smurfs. Objectively speaking, he has one of the most fair kits in the game. There's so many cool plays you can make with Lee Sin, but equally as many mistakes you can make, which makes your successes all the more gratifying and your failures all the more infuriating. He's a very extreme champion for all intents and purposes. Anyway, I hope this video was insightful to those who needed it and entertaining to those who wanted it. I may not be a Lee Sin player, and truth be told, I, like I mentioned before, I kind of have sort of a burning hatred for the guy, but when I look at him from the perspective of a game designer and just the sheer depth to his playstyle and gameplay elements, I can give credit where credit is due. He's an iconic champion for a reason. If you're a Lee Sin main, please let me know your own thoughts on the champion, I'm sure you guys have a lot to say. And for the rest of you, if you have any opinions on him, either positive or negative, love to hear about them in the comment section below as well. If you enjoyed though, a rating would be much appreciated. And be sure to check out my previous episode on why everyone plays where I cover Darius, if that suits your fancy. Also again, if this is your first time watching my videos, I have a sister series to this one named Why No One Plays, where I cover champions that have below average or low representation, so you get to see both sides of the spectrum. I think that's going to be it though. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon in the next video. Take care.